I recently got asked my opinion on straw bale buildings and whether they were a good fit um, or a good building system. So in this video we're going to talk about whether or not straw bale buildings will be a fit for you. And in short, if you don't want to watch the whole video, uh, straw bale buildings are great, but as always, it depends. So straw bale buildings can be an incredible uh, building system or methodology for you to build a house or structure um, depending on where you live and depending on your context and so uh, if you're really interested in buildings that have really really big walls um, then this might be something that that you're interested in I mean that's one of the drawbacks that people talk about when they think about straw bale is how thick the walls are Personally, I really uh, like the thickness of the wall of a straw bale house. I like to have a sill that I can place things on. Um, and I mean, that's just an aesthetic consideration. There's lots of other considerations that are far more important than just the aesthetics when you think about a building that you're going to construct. Um, I find that people can get into building systems far too easily without really considering all the pros and the cons. Now, in one of my previous videos, I talked about a book uh, by Chris Magwood called uh, Making Better Buildings and there's a huge description in here on straw bale buildings so you can get Chris's perspective in there as well but here's my two cents on it. Um, from a thermal perspective um, you know straw bales are pretty thick and so they're gonna have a pretty high R value. Now I haven't seen any kind of conclusive uh, numbers on what people are accepting as the R value for a straw bale building. Um, I've heard as high as R40 and as low as R20 um, and I think it's important to recognize that R values are not um, always super um, descriptive with regards to how the building is going to react. So you could, there's all sorts of components to the thermal efficiency of an envelope and R value is just one of them. Thermal mass is another one and generally it's measured in terms of kilograms or a uh, more scientific measure would be the number of kilojoules um, that's stored per kilogram of thermal mass. And um, what's really neat about a straw bale building is that it has this huge insulative um, wall, so it doesn't really matter what the R value is, R20 to R40, somewhere in there. And then on each side of it, there's anywhere from two to three inches of cob. And actually, ironically, I'm um, St uh, sitting right beside a cob oven. So cob is basically clay, sand, and silt um, with some straw mixed into it for tensile strength. <coughs> now when you build a straw bale wall you actually end up uh, coating the straw bales with a cob uh, like material. Sometimes people will use a concrete render. Um, there's lots of different ways of doing it and there's pros and cons associated with each one. Uh, but cob is a pretty common material if you've got access to clay and sand nearby. And what's really neat about this is that if you coat all the walls inside of your house with three inches of cob on the inside, you're actually creating an incredibly huge uh, thermal mass that's distributed throughout the building. Um, and that distribution is going to allow for much um, smoother temperature gradation. So when the temperature outside drops really low because of the embodied energy in that cob, the building is going to resist changing. So a combination of the thermal mass plus the insulation. Now I hear of a lot of people that want to build rammed earth walls or um, tire walls and these can be good building structures um, but the, the piece that people forget is that you cannot, in our climate anyways, just build high thermal mass walls without insulation. You need to have the insulation component in the wall. Otherwise, you're just going to be living in a medieval castle. So, you, you know, you go back to England and see how castles were built. They were just giant stone walls. And they were essentially high thermal mass elements that were perfect conductors. Um, which is why castles were probably damp and cold and uncomfortable all the time. And the amount of wood they would have had to have burned just to keep a couple of rooms warm would have been crazy. So the nice thing about straw bale walls, and this is a general pattern for wall systems in general when you get into the northern hemisphere to the really cold climate, is you want to have uh, high insulation on the outside with some sort of cladding material. 
and then you want to have high thermal mass on the inside and so that will allow your house to heat up during the day and store that solar energy coming through the windows uh, and all of that thermal mass and then the insulation will slow the release of that thermal mass to the outside and try and keep that thermal mass embodied inside of the house as long as possible. Now other things to think about with straw bale walls, one of the benefits of them is that they're actually a breathable wall system which means that it's a different philosophy to building than let's say a conventional stick frame home where we're trying to seal everything with vapor barriers and uh, vapor planes and all that stuff. So this wall actually freely allows water in and out. And more and more as the green building movement starts to grow, we're starting to see a lot more buildings that use this philosophy of basically letting vapor move through the system. Now there's some key design considerations that you need to take into account before you just build a vapor permeable wall. But it turns out that a standard small square bale um, as a wall system works pretty well. The other thing to consider with any natural building material is they need a good hat and they need good boots, which means that they need really good roofs. Um, you want to have a good overhang to make sure that driving rain is not going to hit the render on the outside. You want to make sure that the render is properly protected. Um, and by boots, we, we want to have a good foundation. So we want to make sure that the actual walls are well above the ground so that if any water moving over the ground is not going to get into the straw bale and rot it. In addition, um, it prevents rodents from getting into the, the straw bale itself, which they shouldn't really want to get into because there's actually no food value in a well um, baled straw bale. Like if the farmer has got a good combine and a good um, a baler, there should be no food value in those bales. One of the other concerns that people talk about is the flammability of straw bale walls, and this is a complete myth. Uh, straw bales themselves are not flammable. Um, there's no oxygen in there. Uh, if they did ever catch on fire, it would be more of a smolder as opposed to a, a fast combustion. So they're actually probably more fireproof than the average stick frame house, which is interesting. Um, and then the other thing to consider is, uh, you know, if you're going to build a straw bale house, is it actually a local building material? Can you get access to it locally? Um, you know, I've seen straw bale houses in regions in Canada where there's no straw, there's no wheat growing anywhere. And so those bales have had to travel a really long distance which you could argue, I mean, we're shipping all of our building materials all over the place, so I can't be too critical on that. But likely, like I've seen, for example, straw bale buildings in the West Kootenays um, near Nelson, BC, which is great. They're beautiful, gorgeous houses. The straw probably came from either Creston or from Alberta. Creston's not too far. But, um, you know, you get out into the West Kootenays and the predominant building material out there is definitely going to be um, wood. They've got so much forest there, it's crazy that you'd build with straw when you've got an unlimited supply of wood to build whatever you want. So the other thing to think about with regards to straw is the maintenance associated with it. Um, it's not crazy. I mean, you do, you're do. you going to potentially, if you're, you're coating the outside of the bales with cob, you're going to have to do a little bit of work here and there. But, I mean, what building doesn't need maintenance, to be honest with you? Um, so I don't know if it's any more maintenance than any other house, but what I'll say is that um, using cob, it's not hard uh, per se, it's just different. And so instead of going to the hardware store to pick up paint and a paintbrush and all that stuff, um, you know, you're going to have to go and find a hole and dig some clay out and get some sand and, and make some cob and then uh, build a render. And so. It's a, it takes a little bit more skill, and so some people are really into that, the craft of maintaining um, a house. So my biggest recommendation to you is if you're interested in building in straw, go to talk to a few people that live in straw houses. Um, go talk to a few people out there that uh, specialize in the construction of straw buildings. Um, and see if you can find some owner, building, owner builders to go and interview and ask them what they would have done differently if they were to build a straw again. Lastly, my friend and colleague Ashley Lubick and Heather, Heather Noakes from Dirtcraft Natural Building are incredible natural builders. Um, they've built several houses with straw and um, they run a company called Dirtcraft Natural Building. I highly recommend you check that out. I'll make sure I put the, their link in the show notes below. So hopefully you found that informative. I guess in the end, I'm a big fan of straw bale houses. Um, you want to make sure that you understand all the pros and cons and the drawbacks and whether it's going to work within that ecosystem, is it a local building material, um, and does the R value thermal mass factor 
work within your ecosystem. There are going to be several places where straw doesn't make sense, and so you're going to need to look into um, a couple of those um, factors. For example, I'll just give you one. If you're building in the tropics or the subtropics, don't build a straw. Um, it's a great building system for the northern hemisphere where it gets really cold in the winter um, and it can get quite warm and dry in the summertime. Thanks so much. If you found this interesting, make sure you check out the show notes below. I've left some links for you. You can check out our website at vergepermaculture.ca and I'll see you on the next video.